Welcome to part two of making a face look like it's cracking apart. Hey guys and welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace and you can find me on Flurn.com where we make learning Photoshop and photography fun. And today we're bringing you part two of a two part series on how to make a face look like it's cracking apart. In part one, we, we chose a texture and we actually applied that to a face. I showed you guys how to transform and warp that and really get it into place. If you guys haven't checked that out, be sure to do so. Put a link right on the screen so you guys can do that. In part two today, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys how to enhance this a little bit more. We're gonna refine those cracks a little bit more. We're gonna add some highlights and some shadows and do some really cool things with that and really make it look like there's three dimensions with this crack. And then we're gonna go in and I'm gonna show you guys how to add the blur to kind of like actually make it look like it's blurring out with the photos. It's gonna be awesome. Okay, so here's where we left off with part one. And the first thing I wanna do, I wanna reduce how much of this cracks and stuff like that's on her face. It's just a little bit too much. She, she looks more sickly than I want her to. Uh, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna double click right here on this adjustment layer, or sorry, this regular layer. And keep in mind, we have it set to multiply. So anything that is dark is gonna show up. Anything that is light is not gonna show up. So what I'm gonna do is use blend diff here and I'm gonna hold alt or option, click right here on this top part here, which is going to affect this layer. And this is basically making this layer invisible where it's a little bit lighter. So the lighter parts of this layer are going to be invisible. So what it's gonna do, our, our darker cracks are gonna stay intact, they're gonna stay there, but the lighter parts are going to go away. So there's the before and the after. All right, now we can use a layer mask in here to just kind of refine this a little bit, you know, get some of these little areas away. I don't want it to, you know, I want it to look like it's she's got cracks on her face. I don't want it to look like she's got dirt all over her face. There's a, there's a difference there. So just using a layer mask to get those small little areas away. And uh, again, we're just painting black on here. So keep in mind, this is for a free tutorial. And um, if you guys are looking for more advanced special effects tutorial, be sure to check out flurn.com. We've got a bunch of amazing pro tutorials that go, you, most of those are two hours long and um, we can cover a lot more depth and detail. This is obviously, I'm doing a relatively rough job because we are, uh, we're in a time limit here. Okay, there we go. So we're looking a bit better there. I like, I like the uh, cracks on her face it's a bit better. Okay, so that's a really good start. The next thing we're gonna do, this is really, really cool. I'm gonna show you guys a great way where you can actually make the shadows and highlights kind of like come alive. We're gonna add some depth to this. So to do so, what I wanna do is we're gonna take this layer here and I'm gonna hit Command J. That's gonna duplicate the layer, okay? Now let's just bring this up to the very top here and it's on a multiply adjustment layer. Let's make sure to clip that and we'll group those. So we've got this layer, basically it's the same as, as the other layer. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna just change this back to normal and we're gonna look at this and then we're gonna take off all of the blending options and things like that. So we just have a totally normal layer, okay. What we're gonna do, I wanna make sure I add highlights to one side of these cracks and shadows to another side of these cracks. So to do that, we actually need to, we're gonna pull some tricks. Um, I'm gonna hit Command I on this layer. So instead of being black cracks on white, it's white cracks on black. Okay, now let's desaturate this. So Shift Command U will desaturate this. And then I can change my layer blend mode from normal down to screen. So we basically inverted this. So the first layer was set to multiply, which makes the cracks the dark parts. Now we've inverted the colors and we've set it to screen. So the cracks are white and they're shining and the black is not showing up. So what are we gonna do with this? Well, let's go ahead and move it around. There we go. And as you can see, as I move it around, you might start to get an idea of what we can do with this. We're actually gonna be able to create some depth because we can see the lighting on our image comes from one direction. And whenever you have like a crack or something, one side is gonna be lighter and then one side is gonna be darker. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Now, we need a way for this to not be visible over top of the cracks and over top of the face. So we can use Blend Diff to do that because the cracks are darker than the face, you can see. So double click here. I told you it's gonna get a little bit complex, but this is a really, really cool technique. 
So double click right on your layer and then where the underlying layer is, hold Alt or Option and then drag that from the left to the right. There we go. Because what it's doing is it's saying this layer don't be visible where the underlying layer is darker. So I'm just making it invisible where the cracks are. So we're going to hit OK there. All right, let's turn this off and on so you guys can get an idea of what our goal was with this. It's adding this little bit of highlight to the edge there. So it really makes it look like it's three dimensional. Very, very cool. Now, the other part I like about creating this on a couple different layers is you can move this around. So if depending on where the cracks are on the face, depending on where the lighting is, you can move this around to make it actually make sense for different areas of the face. Like her forehead looks pretty good like that. Let's just drag our opacity down a little bit. But we might not think this looks good on other areas of her face. Okay, so her forehead looks pretty good. But let's just see about, you know, playing around. Maybe we want to do her cheek or other areas like that. But you know what? To be honest, this looks pretty good. I think it looks good pretty much in most places, which was kind of just luck. Okay, we are going to go with it. Okay, so that's the first step. And you guys can see it really does add a lot of depth and makes it not look nearly as flat. So the next thing we're going to do with adding these cracks, I want to make it look like some parts are actually like kind of peeling up. So we're going to make a new layer and I'm going to grab a brush tool. We're going to change our layer blend mode to soft light. And now painting it black and white, what we're going to do is just paint like a large kind of like fuzzy area, something like that. Okay. So just paint it a white area and set that layer blend mode to soft light. Okay. Now there are two things we're going to do with this. Again, we're going to double click here and I'm going to make this not visible where the underlying layer is darker. So hold Alt or Option, click here and bring this from the left to the right. And this is going to, again, get it out of the cracks. We don't want this to be visible in those cracks, right? And since I chose like a relatively soft edge brush, which I wanted to do because I want this to kind of like fade off, I'm now just going to hit L for my lasso tool and make a rough selection right around this side and then just hit delete. So that's going to make sure that deletes from that area. So what this does is it kind of creates an area that looks like it's kind of like peeling up from her skin right there, as you can see. Okay, so we're going to do this a couple more places to just make it look like it's, you know, really, there we go, to make it look like it is just like peeling up in a couple places. So this part of the tutorial, guys, is all about creating those extra dimensions and really making it look like it's, there we go, that's really cool. Like it's three dimension, three dimensionality, <laughs> three dimensional. All right, so we're gonna select out on the other side of these cracks again, and then just hit delete. And so that way it's only gonna peel up in those areas. Let's uh, create this area right over there. All right, now also keep in mind, I am going relatively quick with this and I'm only gonna cover some of the cracks and things like that. So as you guys are doing these effects, if you're going to be, you know, creating a similar type of effect, just keep in mind, you'll want to spend a little bit more time and really, really take care of quite a few of the cracks. Don't just do this over some of the areas, but I'm going to get you a really good idea of how this works. And then you guys can take the same effect and apply it over top of a larger scale for your image. Now, in this case, I'm using a lighter color. I'm painting with white on a soft light layer to make areas look like they're going up, which is really, really cool. You can do the same thing. There we go with a darker color and make areas look like they're actually sinking down in. So keep in mind, I'm, I am making that selection and kind of deleting it out of there. And what that's doing is it's giving it's giving these highlights a really nicely defined edge that's right there with the crack. So that's what's going to, make, going to make it look realistic. Don't forget that step where you're actually going to select these areas out. There we go. And in just a second, I'm going to zoom out and kind of show you the effects of this. Really, really cool. All right, let's just paint right over there. We'll get kind of looking like it's highlight right there as well. And delete it out of there. 
And one more, and then we'll be done. Okay, so here we can see, let's just turn this off and on. We can see kind of the areas where, like here's a great example, where it actually looks like that paint is like higher up on one side than on another. And if you don't like it in any area, like it's a little too visible there and on our nose, just grab your eraser tool and erase it away. So I would recommend doing that a few more times, but you can see like here on our chin, it creates like a nice line where it actually looks like there is a divide. So let's go ahead and do the same thing. I'm really having fun here, so we're just gonna keep going. And again, we're gonna paint with black, and now I'm gonna go on to a soft light layer again. All right, and then we're going to make this a selection. And then hit delete there. So that's like a darker area. I know that's too visible, so don't worry. I, I do plan on all right, I do plan on making this a little bit less visible in just a second. I just want to make sure that we're setting everything up right. All right. Okay, grab your lasso tool and remember to make these edges. That's really what's going to make this look real. So anytime you're doing any type of effect, you know, in Photoshop, you want to do everything that you can to make it really look as though, you know, it is three-dimensional and it does, in fact, look real. All right, here we go. And we're going to hit delete on that. Very, very nice. All right. And let's just bring that in there. So you don't have to do this everywhere for the effect to really look like it's real. And there we go, we'll hit delete there. Okay, so you can kind of get the idea. Obviously that's way too visible, right? So we're just gonna lower the opacity until we get something that actually starts to look like, you know, it's a subtle, we're all about subtlety here. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the before and the after with those two layers now in combination. So there's the before, still kind of looks flat, and the after you can see it really starts to give it some depth, and it looks like some of these are kind of like peeling up and some are pushing down and things like that. Okay, so here's everything we've done in this tutorial so far. We've gone from this flat looking image where it still wraps around her and everything's really nice, and now we have quite a bit more depth. So it actually looks like this is interacting with her skin which is really, really cool. So to continue with this, just do those same steps over and over again until you have the final image and then you'll be good to go. So next, what we're gonna show you how to do is add a blur and make this really look like it's interacting with the photo. So let's look at our before photo and you can see with this image, what this, um, just because of the uh, shallow depth of field here, we can see it's nice and in focus around the eyes, but this area is not focused at all. So we have kind of like a general like a gradual blur that goes from in focus to out of focus. So I can't just take all these layers and just put a big blur, like a Gaussian blur. That will not work because it kind of goes gradually out of focus. Now I can't just group all these layers. If I try to group these layers, for instance, and merge them, like hit command E and make that work, that wouldn't work as well either because we have so many different blending modes and different options within all these layers that we can't just blur them all. We can't group them and then make them blur we cannot group them and then add that blur afterwards. And the reason is because we lose all of our really special effects. This is what we got, and obviously that does not work either, right? So what we need is a tool that's going to be on top of everything, but, the, but that's going to allow us to blur subtly in different ways. And thankfully, there is a tool that I very rarely use, but it's called the Blur Tool, and I'm gonna show you guys how to use that now. Okay, so it's located under, you've got a little smudge tool, the sharpen tool, and the blur tool. So we're gonna click on our blur tool. I'm on a new layer and the key here is hit sample all layers. So if I hit sample all layers, it's going to sample all the layers and it's going to blur them all at the same time on this new layer. Okay, we'll choose our strength about 50% and then I'll just go ahead and choose my brush a little bit larger. Okay, and now basically it's just painting in the image. So it is going to blur 
you know, it's going to blur the underlying image as well. It's going to blur this, but that's already blurred, so it doesn't really make that big of a difference. All right, so on this new layer, we're just kind of painting in the blur. And I like that I'm on a new layer here because if I don't like what I'm doing, I can just delete this layer at any time and I can redo it. So this blur is really what's gonna sell this effect and make it look a lot more realistic. Because before this, it's just, you know, it looked like it was, again, you wanna do everything you can, everything you can to keep it from looking flat. All right, so let's check out the before and the after with that. So you can see, let's just look right over here, see how it's really nice and gradually blurs out with the image. So there's the effect, still completely sharp. Now adding that blur, you can see the effect blurs with the image. So we get a really nice cracked face image and, um, and it blurs with our image. So really, really cool effect, guys. And if you wanted to continue, we'll just zoom in on her face because I didn't do her body with this, but if you wanted to, basically you would just use the exact same techniques and blur um, and apply the crack to someone's body. So that's it for this tutorial. We hope you like this. It was it's a lot of fun to do this sort of thing. Thanks so much for watching Flurn, guys. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If anything was like too advanced or you guys want to get even more to this, be sure to check out our pro tutorials. We have a great tutorial called Photoshop 101 that teaches you guys the basics of Photoshop. And if you're into special effects, we have some awesome special effects pro tutorials as well. If you guys like what we're doing here at Flurn, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Comment down below. Let us know if there's anything else you guys would like to see and be sure to share this with any friends interest, interested in Photoshop or photography or anything. Um, cracks on people's faces. Although I don't know that anyone has that as a specific interest. But <laughs> if you do, let them know. Thanks so much for watching Flurn and I'll Flurn you later. Bye everyone.